In the studio now for this week's Your Health segment is Dr. Matthew Lawrence, Associate Professor at the University of Maryland School of Medicine's Institute for Global Health. Doctor, thank you for being with us. Thanks for having me here, Jeff. Zika virus is in the news. So let's start with the basics. What, what is it? So Zika virus is a virus that's transmitted by the bite of an infected mosquito. And after that bite occurs, a uh, virus can be transmitted and causes symptoms including joint pain, rash, red eyes, and fever. Only about one in five folks actually have those symptoms, so it's a minority that have the symptoms. And they generally occur about five days after a mosquito bite, and they might last for about five days as well. I'm sure there's plenty of uh, diseases, viruses I've never heard of, but I don't recall having heard about this prior to a few months ago. It's, that's true, it's, it, it has been a hot topic in the news lately, and it's possible that outbreaks have been occurring for many years, but so Zika was first isolated from a monkey, actually, in 1947 from the Zika forest in Uganda, um, and then first cases in humans weren't diagnosed, actually, until 1954 in Nigeria, and then serious outbreaks didn't occur until 2007 on Yap Island in Micronesia, and then the virus spread east uh, to French Polynesia in 2013, and then in 2015 to Brazil. But it's possible that many outbreaks might have been occurring during the same time. We just didn't have the diagnostics to know what was going on in areas of Africa and Asia. So, so we don't know a whole lot about what happened decades ago, but in terms of what's been happening over the last year or two, has, has it exploded in intensity or are we just learning more about it? That's a great question. Uh, we're still learning a lot about Zika virus. There's a lot we don't know. And what we do know is that there are large numbers of people who don't have immunity to Zika virus. So we think that has fueled the spread of Zika virus to new areas where it hasn't been reported previously. That together with a competent mosquito vector, the Anopheles aegypti mosquito that carries Zika virus, has led to the widespread um, Zika outbreak that's currently ongoing. So it's a particular mosquito? It's generally uh, the Aedes aegypti mosquito. Um, there are also other vectors, particularly Aedes albopticus, that's a potential vector as well. But it's generally the Aedes aegypti that spreads it. Are those mosquitoes prevalent in, in North America? There are uh, populations of Aedes aegypti in southern, southeastern United States, particularly in areas of Texas and Florida. They don't extend uh, north of D.C., but there are areas of the U.S. that have the competent vector. Let me remind our viewers, if you have a question about the Zika virus, please give us a call. We will have the number on the screen or tweet your questions, uh, Twitter address at MPT News. So how, how worried should we be? If you or I came down with this, how big a problem would it be? Well, we certainly would uh, not expect to see symptoms in the majority of folks. So most folks who get it actually won't even know they have it. But there is a concern for potential side effects, and those serious side effects could include what's being investigated now, and that's microcephaly, as well as uh, Guillain-Barre syndrome. And the, the microcephaly is the babies being born with abnormally small skulls, and it's the pictures are heartbreaking. How, how firm is the link? It's being investigated. It's becoming a bit more uh, strong uh, as the studies are ongoing and research efforts are ongoing to establish that link. Um, but the, the definite biologic plausibility is still being investigated. So we, we think we have a handle on it, but there's more that needs to be done. Let's take a call. Arlington, Virginia. This is Sarah. Sarah, thank you for calling. Go ahead. Hi, there have been reports on TV about uh, Zika virus affecting some adults, not just pregnant women, but adults with neurological issues, neurological problems. Sarah, thank you very much. That's a great question. So there have been uh, reports of uh, what's called Guillain-Barre syndrome, which is a neurologic manifestation uh, um, where the body's immune system actually attacks nerve cells and might cause weakness in muscles and even paralysis and potentially loss of the ability to breathe. So it can be quite serious. It's been reported in a very minority of patients uh, in previous outbreaks, including in Micronesia. Um, so it's possible that that could be occurring. Uh, let's go out to Talbot County. This is Bob. Uh, Bob, thank you for calling. Go ahead. 
Uh, Jeff, good evening. My wife and I are considering going to Puerto Rico in the next couple of weeks. We're both a, a early 70s, good health. What should we be doing to really protect ourselves from this virus? Bob, have a great trip. Thank you for the call. We'll get the answer on the air. What do you say? That's a great question. And there are things that you can do to protect yourself uh, in Puerto Rico, not only against the Zika virus, but against all viruses or other diseases that are carried by mosquitoes, and that's to avoid mosquitoes. So mosquito avoidance uh, techniques, including wearing long sleeves and pants, sleeping inside of screened rooms or under bed nets, using insect repellents according to package instructions and reapplying frequently, and also uh, spraying your clothing and travel gear with permethrin, which actually lasts for six to eight washings to prevent mosquitoes. So, it, it, correct me if I'm wrong, it, it sounds like um, we shouldn't panic except for potentially pregnant women. It, it, would you be overreacting if you were pregnant or potentially pregnant to, to cancel a, a trip to South America, Puerto Rico, what have you? That's actually what the CDC is recommending to be done currently, is for women who are pregnant or thinking of becoming pregnant to actually postpone travel to areas where Zika is circulating. So if that is unavoidable, then use every means you can to avoid mosquitoes uh, if you are traveling to those areas. Jack in Prince George's County. Jack, thanks for the call. Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, if, if I am bit by one of these mosquitoes, and another of the same variety of mosquito that doesn't have the virus bites me, does it get it and then transmit it from me? Very good, thank you. So generally not. There are only certain mosquitoes that are able to carry this virus and transmit it to others. And the most common is the Aedes aegypti that we've already talked about. But I think you said sexual transmission is possible. Sexual transmission is possible. And we're not talking mosquitoes having sex, right? <laughs> That's right. So uh, there are about six cases that the CDC has currently investigated of probable or confirmed sexual transmission. So it's a mode of transmission we didn't think was likely earlier, but it's becoming clearer that it could be a potentially important uh, means of transmission. What do we know about the, the research to uh, create a vaccine? Great question. So there are many vaccine candidates already being investigated, but the road to vaccine development is quite long. For instance, the dengue vaccine, which is a related flavivirus, it took about 15 years to develop the first candidate. So we are uh, potentially seeing in the clinics the vaccine being tested later this year, but it won't be available for prime time for several years. Uh, let's talk to Joanne and Prince William. Uh, Joanne, thanks for the call. Go ahead. Hi, my question is, if most people who get the virus don't even know they have it, do they not then become a vector and mosquitoes can bite them and infect other people? And then, you know, the other people will have no idea where they got it. Great question. Thanks again. That's a good point. So humans are reservoirs uh, for mosquitoes to bite and then pass on the infection to subsequent humans. So they are uh, reservoirs of infection during that seven-day period when they have virus circulating. You have a travel, uh, travel medicine clinic at the University of Maryland as well. How many questions about this are you getting? We're getting several questions, especially about areas where uh, Zika has not yet been transmitted or documented to be transmitted, but potentially close to those areas where it is documented and how concerned should people be. But for the most part, we give uh, travel advice to avoid mosquitoes, to avoid malaria, to avoid chikungunya, to avoid dengue, as well as Zika virus. And the same advice pretty much applies to all for mosquito avoidance. Uh, looking ahead to the upcoming summer around here, how, how much concern will there be, do you think? Well, certainly we expect the mosquito populations in the southeastern United States to uh, increase during that time period. So the Aedes aegypti mosquito would increase and the potential for spread would be more likely with more mosquitoes around. All right, Dr. Matt Lawrence, uh, University of Maryland, thank you for your time. Thanks very much. Your health segments are a co-production of Maryland Public Television and the University of Maryland Medical System.